How's it going, everyone? We're here at Ann Arbor Summerfest uh, here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I'm Dr. John Sherbeck. And I'm Dr. Cody Carter. Uh, we're fellows at uh, the University of Michigan uh, Department of Pathology, and we're here to talk to random people who are here enjoying this beautiful Ann Arbor weather uh, about pathology. Uh, so let's go. Let's go. I'm here with? Emma. Right, Emma, and what do you do? I'm a high school student. Fantastic. We're here with? Mary. And what do you do? I study biotechnology. David Zinn. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I draw on the ground. Awesome. All right, we're here with? Mary. And what do you do for a living, Mary? I'm a psychologist. Psychologist, wow. Is I'm Kenneth. And your name is? Christina Rapp. Christina, thank you so much for meeting with us. What do you think pathologists do? I don't know, actually. Um, I'm assuming by your scrubs, something medical related. I think they study uh, tissue and disease and try and look at the organism in terms of its overall health and hopefully help us identify how those things are going awry in systems and we can be healthier. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah. Um, he um, takes specimens and he analyzes it and don't they sometimes even do um, uh, autopsies? <laughs> that is that is absolutely correct. Um, what sort of things do you think we're looking for? Viruses, bacteria, parasites. Yeah, exactly. So uh, infectious things, microbiology, um, viruses, you said, those are all really important. Um, the other thing that we're often looking for is cancer. Cancer is the other thing that we're, we're the ones making those diagnoses once tissue comes out of a patient on a biopsy or something like that. How many pathologists do you think work at the University of Michigan? Oh boy, numbers, numbers, numbers. I go 1,500. 25? Probably 1,000. 1,000. I wish. I wish. 40,000? 40, 40,000. 40,000. Like um, 60? 60. That's you're the closest one so far. It's so we have 150 faculty um, at, at in our department, uh, which makes us the third largest clinical uh, department in the hospital. So we're we're pretty big, even though we're kind of behind the scenes most of the time. So how many years does it take to become a pathologist? The same as a regular doctor. Uh, I'm assuming medical school is four years, and then uh, specialization school for pathologist. So I'm assuming eight years. Eight years total. That's good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So uh, pathologists generally do four years of medical school, followed by four years of residency, followed by one to three years of fellowship. Okay. So now I'm gonna. We're just gonna show you a couple, two or three pictures. All right. And these are kind of the routine pictures that we'll see when we're looking under a microscope. And we don't expect you to know what they are, but we want you to just kind of describe what you're seeing and then venture your guess as to where it comes from. All right. You want to. You want to give it a shot. Yeah. Screaming worm. That's what you get for asking an artist. It's obviously a screaming word. That's, that's a uh, definite <laughs> artistic interpretation. Clearly looks like it comes off into, you know, tapers off into a particular, like, circle endpoint, terminal point. Um, but I don't think it's an ear. Um, I'd be thinking maybe like a socket. A, a, a what? Socket. Sockets. Like some kind of joint. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So you're right, it, you're absolutely 100% Correct, it's not an ear. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like a ring in the middle. Um, um, maybe it's a, a slice of some kind of a canal. That's that's right, that's right. Um, and what do you think all that red stuff is? Blood. That's right, and what about the white stuff over on the corner? Uh, maybe like fat tissue connection. Yeah, are you a scientist? <laughs> that is fantastic. So. If you think about this, um, it's kind of a, it's, you're exactly right. So it's a tubular organ and it's, it's kind of cut along its long axis or short axis. So we're getting cross section on it. Can you think of any tubular organs that commonly come out of people? It's one of the most common surgeries people have. Surgeries, uh, I don't know. A classic surgery. Appendicitis. That's right, that's right. That's exactly what this is, it's appendicitis. Here's the next one and even just describe what you're seeing, the colors, the shapes, anything you want to talk about. Okay, so it's kind of round, and up here it's more branched. Um, it's pink and purple. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So pink and purple is an important thing to know. That's because of the stains that we stain this tissue with. This one, it looks kind of like 
It's got like little swirlies going like this. That looks like a sea creature. I don't know, like like the reefs in the sea. I don't know, something like that. Really nice fringe. <laughs> a fringe, yeah. Well, that's a great answer. That's a great. I see. That's called villi. Yeah. Oh my. That's that's fantastic. You're right. There's lots of villi floating out there. Um, now this came from a patient who had a lot of pain right here, right on the right side of their belly. What do you think this could be? A gallbladder. That's right. It's a gallbladder. Um liver or pancreas or something uh definitely looks like red cabbage which i'm assuming it is not um very abstract um definitely a microscoped zoomed in image probably a 200x um but i don't know probably a a, a sample of a blood o type negative i don't know so uh, this is in fact uh something that you might see in your gastrointestinal tract this is a colon polyp. A colon what? A colon polyp. So something, have you heard of uh, getting a colonoscopy? No. All right, so you will when you're about 50. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what they look for. Uh, this is a precancerous lesion that they look for when they do a colonoscopy. Uh, is that where they stick your hand and your... Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, and I uh, really appreciate it. Of course.